Good evening, Harvest. As everyone comes in and makes their way to a seat this, this evening, is uh, I don't know how many of you has heard, but in South Florida, almost to the bottom end of South of South Florida, is a it was a shooting at a school today. A 19-year-old boy that had attended that school prior to the now went in and he, he killed 17 people. And it's 14, it's in the hospital being operated on right now. And, you know, we're God's people. And God's hearts hurt, so our hearts should be hurting. So as we open this, this evening, I want us, to, first of all, to go in prayer for these families and for the victims because they need, they need God's hand on them right now. Father, as we come to you, Lord, as a corporate group, Lord, as is in individuals as well, Lord, our hearts are heavy for these, these people who are in South Florida, Lord, from this shooting at this school, Lord. It's not only students, it's teachers. Lord, it's, no matter who all it was, Lord, they were all, there were 17 lives taken, Lord. Lord, we just pray that each and every one of them were saved and they're going to be with you in heaven. And, Lord, but there's others in the hospital now that's been having surgery, Lord. We ask that your Holy Spirit put your hands on the surgeons, Lord, to guide them that they may do the corrections that need to be done to these, these people who are in surgery now, Lord. And, Father, touch, touch the hearts of each and every one of the family members of each and every one of these, Lord, who, who are, are, have been victims, Lord, because the families are victims, too. They're having to suffer through this, Lord. And, Lord, that... We don't even know what this night feels like to them, Lord. We can't even, and hopefully we never will be able to see and feel that exact thing, Lord. But, Lord, our hearts go out to them, Lord. We just ask you to touch them, Lord. Let them feel your Holy Spirit ministering to them. Let him wrap his arms around each and every individual, Lord, and hold them close, Lord, and comfort them, Father. In Christ's name we ask it, Lord. And now, Lord, we come to you for this service tonight, Lord. Lord, we just ask, Lord, that you'll open our ears and our hearts, Lord, that we'll receive what you have for us tonight, Lord, so that when we leave here, Lord, we will be stronger Christians than we were when we got here, Father. Lord, that we may, when we go out, Lord, we may be able to witness to others, Lord, so that if something like this does come our way, Lord, we'll know what to do and what to say, and, and your Spirit will lead us, Father. Help us, Lord, to grow in your word, Father, as that's what we're here for, to grow in your word and to bless you, Father. And we give you the praise and the glory and the honor for the outcome in all things. In Christ's name, amen. 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 If you would just stand with us this, after, this evening. The Lord says to you, I am Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. Can we just worship him tonight? Or Alpha and Omega, we worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. 
very softly I just want to say that you know when we come into the house of the Lord we come to worship him and we sing about God everything I have inside of me I just want to pour it at your feet and we're always reminded of Mary of Bethany as she came into the house and there were so many people there they were all some of them were sitting some were standing some were listening because they wanted to hear what the master had to say but Mary all Mary wanted to do was wash his feet and that was just so weird to them but the stranger thing was was when she began to wipe his feet with her hair can we just tonight in that image get that in our head as we sing this one more time as when we sing we begin to just place an image before us that says God I'm coming to you tonight and like all upon your feet I'm just gonna offer what I have to you like all upon your feet this is my offering, like water from my heart. I pour my love on you. If praise is like 
the building. Let's give the Lord some praise. My dearest friend, this is my dearest friend, the friend that sticks closer than a brother, the friend that I can talk to when I'm so ashamed to talk to anybody else, the one that hears me, the one that comforts me. Oh God, so grateful for you. Lord, I pour out my love on you tonight. My words can't express how I feel about you. My words can't express your mercy toward me. Lord, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for your love, God walking that love out to the cross oh God Lord I can see you walking toward the cross for us because of your love for us Lord I Lord I thank you for your love thank you for your mercy and thank you for your grace accept I praise accept I worship honor you in everything we do. Dwell with us tonight. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give the Lord a hand cap of praise before you have your seats. I try not to cry on Wednesday night, but sometimes it don't work. Amen. I want to welcome you all to Harvest Christian Center midweek service on uh, Valentine's Day. Amen. I'm going to tell you, Jesus is my Valentine. Amen. Amen. And I was talking with one of my supervisors, actually the captain, and she was saying that she was Catholic and they start uh, uh, Ash Wednesday today. And we start talking openly. She's in charge of everybody there. And we start o openly talking about the Lord in, a, in, in our office and she told me what she was going to set aside and fast and, and how she was going to try to declutter her mind and focus on the Lord and declutter her house and, and, and just do a whole bunch of decluttering while she can see the Lord clearly. Amen. In this time of fasting and prayer. And I, I mean, everybody was there. And she was, she is the, the captain over that, that a whole place and I just thank God for you know that God just that can show up and talk and speak in the, in the lives of people just be be used at work and, and use anyone at work amen just willing to be open and and talk about him amen and I, I'm the rest of the day we talked about the Lord amen so it was a good time so I welcome you here awesome worship praise team did awesome uh, uh awesome uh praise let's give them a hand clap amen i ain't gonna say a hand clap of praise let's give them a hand clap we we'll just thank god for them uh, i want to welcome all our guests how many uh, do i have first time on wednesday night anybody here first timer on wednesday night we got a first time on wednesday night <laughs> praise god amen I think it was maybe because his, her husband was voluntold 
I needed help over there at the Royal Rangers. <laughs> but we thank God for Cheryl being uh, here with us tonight. I want to go ahead and go over our announcements. And because I, I'm looking forward to hearing an awesome word from God tonight. Amen. Uh, um, first announcement, uh, nursing home ministry room to room uh, visitation will be this Friday at 4 p.m. at Specialty Care Center on Pine Forest Road. If you want to be a part, see uh, Todd and Susie Obert. Also, uh, this Sunday we'll be offering baptism. If you've been saved or, or rededicated your life to the Lord and want to be baptized, uh, meet me uh, after after the last worship song, I have a, we have a baptism class that we like you to sit through and know what to expect and what it means. So if you, anyone's interested in being baptized this Sunday, see me right after the last praise song there in the foyer area. Uh, choir practice. If you want to be a part of the choir or be a part of the Easter choir, please stay at the service on Sunday for practice. Uh, next announcement, the Golden Harvesters. We'll be having a breakfast uh, meeting uh, March the 2nd at 9 uh, a.m. at IHOP on, um, on 29 and Pensacola Boulevard. Please sign up in the lo lobby if you plan to attend, and there will be a drawing for a $20 gift card and an opportunity to get a free breakfast also. Amen. Amen. Uh, we mentioned uh, Pastor Brian and Heather Farley will be coming and ministering. Uh, it'll be Sunday the 25th. They have, they've served as pastors here for over 14 years. Those, those are my neighbors I was talking about on Sunday. They will be here. Uh, they will be here the 25th, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. And they're talking about uh, the, the missions to America that God has called them to. So please come be a part, invite someone to hear this awesome man of God. Last announcement is uh, youth and uh, kids, they're having a talent quest coming up. I think last year we did a talent quest. We may have three uh, young people preach and did dance and sing. And that event is coming up. And if you're interested in being a part of being a part of the competition, uh, it'll be April 28th in Greenville, Alabama. Pick up a registration sheet in the lobby and the guidelines on the information, the guidelines for the event also is in the information table in the lobby. Uh, any questions, you can ask Pastor Rick. He'll be doing the praise and worship at that event. Pastor Derek. I said Pastor Rick, didn't I? <laughs> Yeah, see, Pastor Derek, he will be doing a praise and worship for that event, or Beth Kelly. Amen. These are our announcements. Uh, please govern yourselves accordingly. Let's, let's get ready to receive our tithe and offering for the night. Our offering scripture is from Psalms 41 and 2, 1 and 2, and it says, Bless is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in his time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth and will not, and will not, de and will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity and this time to give. Uh, and Lord, we pray that as we give, that we, you bless it and multiply it, make it like the fish in the loaves. Lord, we ask you to bless every home represented here on tonight. Lord, give them supernatural favor. And Lord, and bless our coming in and our going out. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. After you've uh, given, we're going to have one more worship song. And our speaker for the night is uh, Brother Jerome. I, amen. Let's give it up. I spoke with his pastor this morning, uh, Pastor Tibbs, and uh, we had an awesome, awesome conversation, and know that he's licensed minister and ordained elder. He don't like to tell everybody all of that. We just, he like to go, go by the name of Brother Jerome, 
but uh, he gonna, we're going to uh, see what God has given him to give to us today. So after this last praise uh, song, the next voice you will hear is Brother Jerome. Amen. Y'all can stand up if you want to. It's not going to hurt my feelings one bit. You can go ahead and start that CD. Come on, put your hands together. Ooh. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my soul. Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it? It's the rhythm of a gospel song. If you choose it, you can lose it. Oh, cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. I got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. When the valley Come on. that I wander turns to mountains that I you are with me, you never leave me Oh, cause there ain't nothing, there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy I've, I've got, got an old church choir singing in my soul I've got a sweet salvation and it's beautiful I've got a heart overflowing cause I've been restored There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy there ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Oh, 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 oh. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. 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 Clap your hands and stomp your feet till you find that gospel beat. Cause that's all I'll ever, oh, all oh, you ever need. Clap your hands. Come on. Oh, till you find that gospel beat. Cause that's all you ever need. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet surrender, and it's beautiful. I've got an old church choir singing in my soul. I've got a sweet salvation, and it's beautiful. I've got a heart overflowing, cause I've been restored. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. No, there ain't. Nothing gonna steal my joy. There ain't nothing gonna steal my joy. Can you give God a hand clap of praise tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Keep the praise going. Keep the praise going. Amen. Keep the praise going. Sometimes we. We, we tend to look at people too much. We need to start looking at God. You know, we, we want personal accolades. We, we want to take glory for what God is doing. But we have to honor God. It's because of him we live, we move, and we have our being. Amen? Amen. I... Uh, Thank you, Pastor John. I um, consider this a, a blessing and an opportunity uh, to be before God's people. Um, I take this very seriously. I don't ever want to use this platform to pervade my opinion. If I can't say what the Spirit of the Lord is saying for the body for this season then I'm in my flesh. The church is in a season right now of transition. And God is preparing us to go somewhere. 
But it's going to depend on God's people unifying themselves. On the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says, and it starts like this, that when the day of Pentecost was what? Fully come. They were all with one accord. And I'm going to try not to preach. I want to actually teach tonight. But I feel good in my spirit. Amen. First of all, I want to say happy Valentine's Day to all of you. And uh, I did do my part. <laughs> if you didn't do yours, I'm building a shed on my property. <laughs> you can stay there tonight if you want to. <laughs> But I was listening to Pastor John, as much as I love my wife, I'm here to tell you that there is a greater love than what I could ever have for her and what she can ever have for me. And the Bible says no greater love than this, than a man would lay down his life, lay down his life for his brother. Amen, amen. I have a word that's in my spirit, and um, I was wondering when and how I was going to be able to release it, and Pastor John gave me a call. Don't the Lord work in mysterious ways? <laughs> I wanted to call Pastor Rick and say, hey man, you got to come back to Florida. But we thank God for the opportunity because God won't put anything in you that he won't prepare you to release. When you understand the origin of what's in you, when you know where it's coming from, then you can release it with confidence. Because you know it's not of you, it's of something bigger than you. It's of something greater than you. Amen, amen. And I, 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 I want to start by, by, by um, getting into this uh, NBA thing and and um, I'm, a, I'm a Cavaliers fan. I, I love, Le well, I was a Miami Heat fan and all that. Oh, only because LeBron was on those teams. So wherever LeBron goes, I tend to follow. <laughs> um, of late, there has been a lot of controversy in the locker room of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, they couldn't come together. And it showed on the court, on the basketball court. There was dissimulation among all the players. However, they were all connected. But they couldn't accept each other's differences. They were all pros. And they were all Cleveland Cavaliers. But they couldn't come together. So there was an issue within the team that had to be addressed because they're qualified to play. They have been qualified to be and approved to be pros. They have been drafted to play, to, 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 to entertain, if I can use that. They, they're qualified, but they couldn't come together. So something had to be done. Something had to be done. Amen. Amen. See, so if you can pull up James chapter 3. And I feel this is very important for, for where we are as not just the body of Christ, but as Harvest Christian Fellowship. I really believe this is a message that is going to piggyback off of what we heard from Pastor Al on last week. And I think that what God is calling for is a transparency and, and, and a, a need to come together for, for his people to come together, for his people to discard the trivials. 
to, to discard the superficials, the personality conflicts that the enemy implements within God's people to keep us from unifying. Because if we unify, then he's in trouble. Anybody agree with that? Amen. Anything that is unified is powerful, even if the agenda is negative. History has proven it. In the, in the Bible, Genesis chapter 11, when they were building the Tower of Babel, those people were succeeding because they had one mind, the Bible said. They had one mind. They were on one accord. But their agenda was not to bring honor to God. So what did God have to do? <laughs> he had to come in and trade some of them. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm, that's Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, but, but the Bible says he had to come down and what? Confound their languages because he said that these people are going to succeed because they have a mind. Come on now. They have a mind that is unified. So we got to come down there and confuse that thing because there's nothing they won't be able to do. Just imagine if God's people can get that, embrace it, and implement it, you will see the glory that we saw on the day of Pentecost. And Peter came out and said, they are not drunk as you suppose, but they are filled with the Holy Ghost. And he preached the message. And the Bible says, well, my Bible says, I'm pretty sure yours does too, that after he preached under the unction of the Holy Ghost, the Bible said 5,000. That's a lot. Even in the early stages of something, usually something gains momentum as it's around for a while. But in the early stages of Christianity, five, I'm saying something whether you want to receive it or not, 5,000 souls was added unto the, church, to the church. And the Bible said, and such as should be saved. Amen. Amen. I want to read this for you. And um, I told Pastor John, I'm, I, I'm not long-winded, but I'm not the Holy Ghost. <laughs> so I, I try to follow its lead because it's the spirit that does the work. It's not our intellect. It's not what looks good on paper. It's about what's been proved and approved in heaven. That's what it's about. James chapter 3, and I'm just going to read the, the entire chapter. Um, and it reads like this, and I think this is the NIV. Okay. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. Anybody have a, a thought on that? On that verse alone? Okay, see good. Okay, continuing on, we all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Able to keep the whole body in check. When we put 
bits into the mouths of the horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. I, like, I really like this analogy that they use here in this, this passage. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder wherever the pilot wants to go. We're talking about the tongue. The misuse of the tongue. Homes have been broken up because of the tongue. Churches have been broken up because of the tongue. And this is what the enemy wants to do, is to get God's people paying attention to the externals. Because not everything you see is of God. Doesn't matter how righteous it looks. But the Bible says that you try the spirit by the spirit to see if it's of God. We have no right and no place to judge anyone that God has created. And especially those whom God has approved. Amen. 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 Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. My, my brother here told me we were out in the, in the lobby and we were talking. I remember that statement you said, it was really true, that there's a, a lot of us who cannot see the forest for the trees. That's absolutely true. Because if you stand too close, the, you, you, you can't see the entirety of the thing. So what do we have to do? We have to take a step back. And as we take a step back, then the scale widens. Then we'll be able to see not just what's in front of us, but we can see what's all around the one tree that we can only see by being too close. And when we take a step back and we pray for God's perspective and God's revelation, then he gives us just what we need to see. And we're in the book of James, and in, over in chapter 2 of James, it says that if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives liberally and a braid of not. God doesn't judge. If we don't know, we just don't know. So we go to him for revelation, not only concerning others, but concerning ourselves. Because sometimes we look at the tongue, the tongue is even detrimental. It's not just detrimental to others, but it can, it can be detrimental to ourselves because we misuse it. Because whatsoever a man thinketh, the Bible says, so is he. And most of us say what we think. If something is in here, usually, we, by impulse, we say it. And a lot of times when we say it, then we bring a curse upon ourselves. Matthew chapter 7, it says, just not that you be not what? Judge. Because the same manner that you what? Judge, you shall be judged the same manner. So when we release cursings out of our mouths, then we plant seeds of cursing that has to present a harvest. It has to present a harvest. Amen. The tongue also is a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Anybody have anything they want to say concerning every, anything that we've read or said? Feel free to speak. Okay, no one? Amen. 
All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. Out of the, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in what? God's likeness. I know somebody's got something to say on that. No one have anything to say. Don't let me intimidate you. I'm not Brother John. I mean, I, you guys can. That was it? <laughs> that was enlightening. <laughs> um, what that is kind of saying to me is that it's kind of like money. Money can be used for good or money can be used for evil. And the same with our tongue. It can be used for good. We praise our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Or we can bring evil upon ourselves, used for evil. By talking, backbiting, that sort of thing. Like popcorn now. Oh, you got I already have one. Um, you know, and that's that's my flaw too, is the work and the tongue. You know, but we have a heavenly Father. Even though we have this tongue and we're humans, um, He'll break your heart for it. Because I mean, you're using this tongue to praise Him, then hurt other people. He just he he's not double minded. But you know, we have a heavenly Father. If you truly ask Him to forgive you and help you, He will. And He brought. You know, I made a bad mistake last week with my tongue and because somebody hurt me. But this person at work, God has broke my heart for her. And I've had people praying for me and for her. And God is doing so many great things. So you see this, but you just remember God's going to forgive you for it. And, and if you really ask him for forgiveness and he breaks your heart for it, it does get easier. But you have to reach out and let people pray for you, too. That God taught me that Thursday, and and people, Robbie praying for me and this person. I know I'm getting off on a tangent, but the minute we start praying, all of a sudden I said, just pray for open doors. Doors, boom, started opening at work. So we can't do it on our own because this stupid thing will get us in trouble. But we have a family, and if we are unified, we have great power. And I think somebody else had, had, a mic, had their hand up. You know, when we think about the, the, the power of words, the Bible said in the beginning, God said. Think of that. In the beginning, God said. Everything that is and was created was created by a word that God spoke. Now, now, my Bible says that the same power that rose Jesus from the dead lives in us. So, so if, if the power that, that, that God essence formed the world, and that same power lives in us, we have the ability to form some very catastrophic things. We can misuse a, a power. You know, uh, if, if you, you put a semi-automatic weapon in the hands of a child, that child is going to hurt himself or somebody else. Why? Because they don't know how to use that weapon. So they're going to hurt themselves or hurt someone else. So God is letting us know tonight that where we are going as a church body, and, and, and as a local body, 
we have to stop this. And, and the Bible says this, um, out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, y'all finish it. Okay, we, let, let's say this again. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters. I, you know, I didn't write the Bible. And I'm not that smart or that spiritual. <laughs> but we have to know. That it's important to come together. We have to know that if we see a brother overtaken in the fault, this is the word of God. The Bible says he who is what? Come on, Bible scholars. He, come on, Brother Pastor John. Amen. And what else to say after that? <laughs> This is my last Wednesday. <laughs> but it, it simply says this, and I'm going to paraphrase, that if you're not careful, you'll find yourself in sin yourself. While you're judging your brother and your sister, be careful because you may find yourself in a place that you could be judged. See, we're family here. I mean, look at me. I look like all of y'all. Look at the, look, Pastor Jerry. He's a prime example. Look at that. Look at him. My, my brother right here. We look just alike. We're siblings. Heavenly siblings. That's what we are. We are heavenly siblings. We should protect each other. I remember when I was a child, we had a bully. I was probably probably eight years old. My wife probably heard this story a thousand times. There was a bully by the name of Junebug. Junebug. Every day, Junebug would, as soon as we got off the bus, oh my gosh, what he would do to us. My twin brother and I, until one day, the bus let us off too close to home. And mama would saw it and was standing in the door. And she said, hey, go over there and I want you to whoop him. Because if you don't, I'm going to whoop you when you get here. And why did she say that? <laughs> it didn't take long. The anointing came over me like Elijah. You know, when Elijah outran the, <laughs> with the Bible say when he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain, and, 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 and the anointing, the Bible said, came over Elijah, and the, and the Bible said he outran the chariot. He beat King Ahab back to the kingdom. That's what happened to me that day. And we whooped Junebug. And we never had a problem with Junebug again. What am I saying? The enemy wants to keep us separated. Because if he can do that, we can't come together and we can't whoop him. But we will unify and we can whoop him and we can make him flee. Because he knows they love each other. I can't go over there to Harvest. Them people love each other. I got to find me. He may sit in the back, but he ain't coming up front. Them people will whoop me, so I'm going to have to find me another church. They'll go over to that Baptist church over there. <laughs> Let me finish reading this, and I'm going to be done. Anybody have anything to say? Okay. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Who is wise and understanding among you, let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. And wisdom only comes from God. That's where it comes from. 
All the halls of academia can't give you that. No doctorate, no master can give you the wisdom from heaven. Amen? But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is, first of all, what? Pure. Pure. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. The agenda is what God looks at. He doesn't look at the things the way we look at things. David was the most fallible and, and, and the most messed up individual in the Bible. But God said something about him that he didn't say about anybody else. Think about that. He's a man after my what? Own heart. Oh, if we could get that. If we can get that. For where you have any selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a of righteousness. That's it. That's it. That's it. I want you to know I love you on, 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 on uh, uh, Valentine's Day. I, I, I want you to know I love you on Valentine's Day. But, but, you know, a lot of times his holiday comes and it forces people to perform. Oh, thank you. We, the expectation that comes with Valentine's Day, it, society and tradition places a lot of pressure to perform. I'm saying something. I'm saying something, brothers and sisters. But we don't want to perform. We want this thing to be real because God looks on the heart. The book of Jeremiah says that he trieth the heart and he tests the reins. So God knows the deepest part of us. He knows if I don't like Brother John. I don't care. Like Brother Al said, I don't, we, we go through these religi the religious rhetoric, you know, the, 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 the religious, the, the thing to say, you know, Brother, I love you, you know, in the name of Jesus, I love you. And the minute he turned his back, I'm putting daggers in him. God does not honor that. I don't, I, he doesn't honor that. And he wants us to come together. He wants us to love each other. I'm so glad just looking around. I can't, nobody I see in here tonight, I have any altar gifts. None. I love you the way God puts in me to love you. I don't love you because he told me to. I love you because I want to. And I know that brings him honor. Amen. Praise God. Anybody got anything to say? And we're going to be done. Any icing on the cake from, from anybody? Pastor Al? Yeah, we've been starting to go into the county jail. And uh, when we go in there, um, speaking of uh, not having judgment, um, when we go in there, we forget we're even in the county jail. We just feel like we're spending time with our brothers in Christ, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, and when God's work, and when we just let God do the thing in there, you know, hopefully we're, we always have, but um, uh, and let His word speak. I've seen guys that are um, have life sentences just.
come to tears, you know, because of God's word, you know. And um, um, on the other hand, when when my words come out, sometimes, like at the food bank, we have these uh, we have these uh, smoothies that that we've been getting at the food bank, and the expiration date is is passed, but by government regulations, it's still good for uh, you know six months, a year, whatever it is. And um, somebody said something like, "Gee, I wonder how long these are good for." I said, "Well, I guess until the first person gets sick." And and <laughs> and uh, well, that per that person's like, "No, I re I rebuke that or I reject that." <laughs> and right there, you know, um, just uh, what it reminded me of having a negative thinking, how that can affect a whole group, you know. And um, and so I I made it audibly. I made an audible repentance right there. I said, oh, man, I should have said that, you know. <laughs> you know, just and, um, not just attacking somebody, um, but having a, a negative words, how it can um, um, affect a whole group, a whole congregation. And But anyway, that's it. Pass, pass Al had his hand. Oh, he's got him. Where all these mics come from? <laughs> <laughs> We appreciate you all, and um, I guess we can just go ahead and pray and close it out. And, and I know I didn't pray before, but I've been praying all day <laughs> that this word is articulated. Father, we just thank you right now. We just thank you for your love. We, we thank you for your laughter among, among my brothers and sisters. Lord, you, you said that uh, uh, laughter does good like a medicine unto the soul and we just thank you right now for this opportunity Lord we ask that you would continue to make us mindful of our words and continue to make us mindful of the agenda of our words and we just ask that you will continue to, to lead and guide us and teach us like as you always do Father we thank you for harvest Lord we thank you for these wonderful people we thank you for them being just a part of our lives, Lord God. We ask that um, you will continue to keep my heart open to receive anything that any of my brothers and sisters have to say. And, uh, Lord, we ask that your, your anointing will, will make me aware if it isn't you. But we just thank you for your spirit. And we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen.